Okay. Let's be real about one of the most terrifying and dreadful experiences of everyone's life. Of course, as you guessed, well, probably guessed, what I'm hinting at is death. Everyone, whether they admit it or not, has some type of anxiety or fear tied to this dreadful topic. So that poses an important question to us as a society and especially our medical personnel. How can we attempt to make this experience as comfortable as possible? So everybody's afraid of death. What are we supposed to do about that and how can we help them? That's where hospice care comes into play. Modern hospice care can be tracked back to Dr. Dame Cicely Saunders. She's a doctor from London that opened the first modern hospice care facility in 1967 by the name of St. Christopher's. A Dr. Florence Wald from the US would eventually go to London inspired by the idea to check it out. She would take back what she learned and what she experienced to the US and open the first hospice care center in the US in 1974. Almost 12 years, 13 years later in 1986, hospice care finally became a part of Medicare programs to be widely used by the population. Well, what is hospice care? Hospice care is a form of end of life care that is available for people with end stage diseases or any life threatening illness. Hospice care usually begins when a patient is said to have less than six months to live because that is usually when a physician will step in and refer them to a hospice care facility. The main goal of hospice care is to help relieve pain and symptoms and to make the person as comfortable as possible in the coming months. So if the main goal of hospice care as listed on the last slide is to relieve pain and symptoms and to make life as comfortable as possible for these individuals, how do they do this and who's involved in this goal? First, I wanna look at the team. The hospice care team it carries a wide range of individuals with different skill sets that pretty much cover anything that someone in this position could possibly need. And the programs themselves come pretty packed with the Medicare and Medicaid alone. The programs include all medical supplies, all medications related to the terminal illness, care education, counseling for up to 13 months after the passing, short-term inpatient care if needed, along with numerous types of therapy also if needed. I didn't list any type of care aimed at curing the disease because if you want to aim at curing, or curing the disease, that's often extra, along with 24-7 nursing is also extra. Why do we use hospice care? Why is hospice care a good option for people facing this less than six months to live time frame? The best way I can ask you to think about this is to put yourself in the shoes of somebody needing hospice care. If you're on death's door with less than six months to live, would you be more comfortable in a hospital room surrounded by medical personnel with the sounds and smells of a hospital? Or are you going to be more comfortable surrounded by your loved ones with the sounds and smells of your day-to-day -day life that you've been used to for years. I wanna wrap this up by reading a quote from the founder of Modern Hospice Care. You matter because you are you, and you matter to the end of your life. We will do all we can, not only to help you die peacefully, but also to live until you die. Dr. Dame Cicely Saunders. Death is an inescapable thing that happens to everyone. People should have the choice to confront death pain-free in a familiar place and with dignity. That is the type of merciful choice that hospice care provides to individuals.